Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with creative consultant Deborah Weiss, and we discuss her long-term experience with the photography industry, her focus on copyright issues, and what photographers need to know to protect their work. And she also shares how to differentiate yourself in the age of Instagram. Check it out. Deborah, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. You just gave a pretty big talk here at Photo Plus Expo about uh, about fear, mm -hmm. overcoming fear. Yeah. About, fear, about overcoming fear and how to have the career that you want. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal right now. It's a big deal. I mean, I think that there's a lot going on that gives people cause to worry. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing, particularly amongst professional photographers, that gives them cause to worry is Instagram. Really? And how Instagram specifically? Well, it's because uh, most art buyers, most creatives look at Instagram every day. And I mean, there is some amazing stuff out there by amateurs, yeah. by people who are not seasoned photographers, not professionals. Uh, and they actually wind up getting jobs. Right, right. So, you know, photographers are, have always been, historically, have always been nervous during changes, you know, mm -hmm. technological changes. In 1888, when Kodak invented the camera, the professional photographers of, of the day were going, oh my God, everybody's a photographer now. What are we going to do? And in 1888? In 1888. Wow. And that's what brought about the pictorialist movement hmm. because they had to separate themselves from just the average person on the street. Interesting. You know? and, and, uh, and then when Nikon brought in the, the uh, SLRs in the 60s, they started importing them like crazy. Everybody went, oh my god, everybody's a photographer now. The difference, though, back then was that you still had to know something. You had to know something about the craft mm -hmm. of photography. Today it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, Anybody can get lucky once and take a great picture. Sure. The, what will always separate the pro from the amateur is the pro can do it on demand. Yeah. The pro is a problem solver, and that's something that that's excellent. cannot really be you know, taken lightly. Mm -hmm. um, because when you're dealing particularly with an advertising shoot, and there's hundreds of thousands of dollars involved, you don't want to be stuck on a set with somebody who you know, has only operated an iPhone. Yeah. And the problem with photographers, unlike other businesses, when you're a baker or a lawyer or a plumber, you basically put a business plan together, and you take out loans so that you can operate your business. Photographers do not think this way. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem with that is that when, um, it is that when you're, you're struggling and when you're stressed about money, you, the creativity suffers. Yes. You cannot just be free. Yes. I know that everybody loves to talk about starving on. You have to be starving. You have to suffer. It's such nonsense. Yeah. It's it's total nonsense. You know. I it, just it, I just gave a talk here where where the, one of the major elements is exactly what you're saying, which is if you've got all this stuff stuck in your head, how do you look at a scene and just think, okay, I'm gonna really brainstorm the heck out of this. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna get really creative lighting. I'm gonna have cool backgrounds. But no, you're sitting there thinking. I can't even think. I've got so right, much right, to do right. and catch up I've with. I've got and bills to pay, yes. and I've got to worry about this and worry yeah. about that. And for people with family, I don't, you know, it's got to be a really terrible, you know, terrible situation. Yeah. You know, I said but, yesterday, there's, you know, I talk about fears, and we have, you know, rational fears and irrational fears. To me, a rational fear is Donald Trump. An <laughs> irrational fear is getting on a plane. Right. If you're flying, you know, and, well, and something that you have absolutely no control over, yeah. you know, and I, I say to, you know, when I ask that question of photographers and, I, you know, I just look at them and go, honestly, it's really not about you. Like, you know, the universe is not going to single you out mm. to, you know, to do away with you that, you know, that day. I mean, you, you know, so you it's know. almost like some of these fears that creatives are having are actually quite self-focused behaviors. Yes, it's self-focused behaviors. There's a, an old German proverb, um, the uh, fear makes the wolf bigger than he is. Yeah. And and what, the, perfect. what they're saying is, you know, like if you didn't let your head get in the way of that, you would look at it, it's just a wolf. Yeah. That's all it is. But we tend to blow everything up out of proportion. You don't see the shadow of the wolf looming. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And we, we just, and you know, there's certain things, and I also tell photographers, have an out-of-body experience. 
Make believe you're someone else. Make believe you're a really confident person. When you go in for a meeting for the first time, if you're meeting an just art pretend. director, just pre because there's no other way around it. You yeah. know, I mean, there's also tips like if you're going in to meet a total stranger, first of all, a lot of that comes with practice and with experience. But if you're going in to meet a stranger and you're a bit uncomfortable, which photographers usually are because they're not the ones in the driver's seat. Right. You know, they're going to somebody to get hired. You know, do a very quick inventory of what's in the office, of what's around them. What are they wearing? Like, what are they, do they have a baseball on their shelf? What, mm -hmm. what are the pictures? And just start talking, find something in common to talk yeah, about. something to connect on. Because then you're making it right off the bat about them, and they love it when it's about, yeah. about them. And it, it sort of breaks the ice. It makes it you know, easier to actually meet someone. Because for, for a photographer, it's difficult when somebody's looking at their work, because the photographer takes it so personally. Yes. And they can't take anything. In business, you cannot take any of this <laughs> you don't personally. Like it? You don't like me? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, they don't, I, I don't think they understand. I, I think that there's a, a segment of, you know, the, of the photography population and the art buyer population and, and publisher and people want, that make it want to seem like it, we're all just really friends. Mm -hmm. But we're not. And we're really not. And, and what, they, what they're looking for is something that is applicable to what they're doing and what's either going to get their message across and please their client and make them keep their job. Mm -hmm. so that they can make their mortgage payment. This is like really, yeah. this is the nuts and bolts. And then every once in a while, you get to meet incredible people, incredibly talented people. I don't believe anybody at an agency or a magazine starts off the day with, wow, I can't wait to do some crappy work today. <laughs> you know, I, I think they're so beaten, you know, yeah. everybody is so beaten down by, yeah. you know, and what the clients do now, because they've started putting their little paw prints on, you know, on the create the creative aspects of the job, they're putting the the agencies in a terrible position because they'll just say to them, you know, look, if you don't do what we want, this is what our focus group says. You don't do what we want. Let's just, you know, there are fifty other agencies yeah. lined up behind you, yeah. which is similar to what agencies have been doing to photographers for right. years. Right. You know, by using that as you know leverage to get or, them to lower or the bid or acting or anything. Yeah. But moving forward, I mean, you know, uh, again, there's that thing about, you know, the pro can do it on demand and you just have to constantly stretch yourself, you know, with the number of photographers, even the professional photographers, number of professional photographers, there's so much work that looks exactly alike. Because hmm. what happens is they all shoot with the same cameras, mm -hmm. the same lenses. David Burnett, who's a great photojournalist out of Washington, uh, during, he covered the Gore campaign, and he showed up the first day of the campaign, and everybody was there with the same Canon cameras and the same Canon lenses, and he looked around and he went home, he lives in Washington, he went home and he got his speed graphics. And he schlepped that huge camera all around the campaign trail, and won major awards because his look, it Stood had out. such a different look. Yeah. And it's really difficult to stand out but that's what makes, that's what separates the great photographers yeah. from, that, from the rest. Yeah, and that quote right there, um, it's really hard to stand out when you're trying also to kind of fit right into the market. To fit in. Like that's, it, it's it's such, to fit in. So where can people go to find out more about you and also some important tips they should know in terms of protecting their work? Okay, so um, I am at DebraWeiss.com. I'm on Instagram uh, at Deborah Weiss. Uh, even I'm on Instagram. I fought it for a very, very long time uh, because of the copyright, because of copyright protections. I'm a copyright advocate, and I, everything we're living in the Wild West, and people just steal left and oh right, goodness. and they use, and it's it is a real problem. I would urge every photographer to register their images with the copyright office in Washington. It's very, very easy now, particularly if it's in a before you put it anywhere. You know, it, it's register it as an unpublished image if possible because you can register a million of them for one flat fee. Mm. Uh, it's very, very important because what that oh, does... Oh, I didn't know that. That's a good yeah, tip. What that does is it gives you protections and it, give, it affords you things uh, should somebody infringe. And, and the person with the blog, you can't go after them. I mean, you... 
you can't waste your time or your resources or your money. But there are major corporations who willingly and knowingly yes. lift images all the time. Right. All the time. And they do it because the chances of them getting caught or the chances of a photo photographer really taking action yeah. are so slim that it's actually cheaper for them to have to deal wow. with it later on. Wow. I mean, this is, you know, it's American cor corporatocracy and that mentality of, of thinking. But so, um, it, you know, I, I, can be, I can be reached, uh, you know, on the website, the phone, all the information is there, Perfect. all the contact Perfect. information is there. Um, I would just urge photographers to, you know, really, first of all, to constantly stretch. You know, there's, there's an old saying, there's nothing new under the sun, okay? And people, most people have heard that expression. Mm -hmm. Do you know where it comes from? No. Uh, it comes from Ecclesiastes. It was oh. King Solomon. I was having that all, right. all the way back then. And there was nothing under the sun back <laughs> That's then. Funny. That's funny. So, <laughs> so it, it's very liberating in a way because photographers, because of the number of photographers and the fact that it's really hard to stand that, they have to think, oh my God, I have to create, I have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And it's not that they have to do that, but it's the approach yeah. to the work. And that's where the photographer's eye comes in. That's where photographers have, you know, there are some that have ways of looking at things that, you know, that nobody else does. Mm -hmm. And that's what will separate them. So I, you know, I would urge them to constantly stretch themselves creatively to protect their work, to understand that it's a business. Go take a business class. Mm -hmm. When you're through with that, take another business class. Right. Because the people that you're dealing with that are paying you understand what business is about. Yeah. And you know, and just don't don't put yourself, don't get terrified about everything. You have to remain true to yourself. You you have there has to be an air of authenticity yeah. about everything that you do, and you just have to work hard at it. It's there's nothing easy. Oh, no, there's goodness. nothing easy in life, <laughs> you know. That's well, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, well, thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. No. I know you've got a busy schedule, so I'll let you go. Thank um, you. But some great tips here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Deborah. I really appreciate your time. And check us out here next time on Redefine Show. And don't forget, if you want to protect your work, you should make sure you get better at it. And Adorama has tons of tutorials for you.